Can you believe it's almost been a half of a year since we did a Cool Tools video? Well, I'm going to make up for it today because this might be among the best that I've done yet, and that is saying something. If you're new to this series, a few times a year I kind of bring people up to date on some of the coolest innovations in woodworking. These are things that I have personally used and found to be truly useful additions to my workshop. Today I'm going to talk about diamond floor mats, black rulers, knee pads with wheels, a clever sharpening tool, a router with an amazing array of features, and the knife I carry in my pocket every day. Plus a couple of extra surprises that you have to wait to the end of the video to see. So I'm going to put links to all these cool tools below because I can't tell you everything about them here and you want to check the latest price. So I'm, that'll be in the uh, video description, which you'll have to expand, and it will also be pinned to the top of the comments if that's more convenient. Check those links out because you're going to often find discount codes down there and relevant disclosures. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. Years ago, I found a pair of diamond deck floor mats at a yard sale, and they have always been my favorites. Back then, I had cement floors in the shop, and I had lots of mats laying around, but these were the ones that I always moved to the spots that I stood the most whenever I rearranged the shop, like behind the table saw or the bench, because they were by far the best ones. I always wanted to get my hands on more, but I couldn't find them for a reasonable price. They were always really expensive. Well, now I have a carpeted shop, which is a real luxury in many ways. I made a video about that once if you want to search my channel. But I still put mats in places where I stand a lot. And recently, I was thrilled to discover an affordable source for the Diamond Dex mats that I've always wanted. I can't describe how excited I am about that. These things are amazing. They are thick and soft in the center, but they taper off around the edges, so it's easy to sweep around them. Of course, I don't sweep my carpet nowadays. I'm just showing you how that works. In my case, I vacuum, and the vacuum doesn't catch on the edges. These things are also really tough. These two I've had for, I don't know how long I've had them, but they're probably about 20 years old because they were used when I got them, still going strong. They come in two sizes, two foot by three foot and three foot by five foot. You want to get the ones that have the diamond plate pattern on the surface. They make some that look like they're just foam. I've never used those, but the diamond plate pattern have a durable, shiny surface on them, and those are the ones that I use. I really think you should invest maybe in just one. Small or large, your choice. Just put it in front of your bench or your table saw and use it for a while. I guarantee you're going to agree this is the best mat that you've used in your shop, and you're going to be looking for more, like I was. I'll put a link to them below the video. Over the years, I've become at least a self-styled connoisseur of fine rules. I've tried a lot of them, and I have several brands that I like. There's not just one brand. But last week I showed this one in a video, and a lot of you have since agreed that these are definitely worth getting. So I want to briefly share them here with the Cool Tool audience. The first thing folks noticed is that they're black. Now this makes it very easy to read, especially because there are contrasting white markings. My eyesight is fine with my glasses on, but I can read this thing even with my glasses off. Another important feature is the scales. There are no 30 seconds. One is sixteenth, the other is eighths. Now ask yourself, do you really use 30 seconds for most woodworking projects? I'm not saying do you only measure to the nearest eighth. What I mean is, do you measure, do you lay something out that is like 22, 30 seconds? Most often, you're using eighths, like quarter, three-eighths, half, five-eighths, three-quarters, and sometimes sixteenths, like five-sixteenths or eleven-sixteenths or whatever. My point is, I like to use a scale that is as uncluttered as possible for those measurements, usually eighths and sometimes sixteenths, because if there are fewer marks on the scale that you're not going to use anyway, it's faster and more accurate to get your readings and you're going to make fewer mistakes. So when you combine the white and black markings with the simplified scales, these become, I think, the easiest to read and perhaps handiest rules in my shop. Honestly, you're going to be amazed at how much this simplifies your work. I still like my Shinmo rules and my Bridge City rules and half a dozen others. I'm not saying get rid of your rules. I also have some that have finer scales because sometimes I do want 30 seconds. 
But for under 10 bucks, especially because it's of exceptional quality, I highly recommend grabbing at least one black benchmark rule from my link below this video and just trying it out. It may become your all-time favorite. This is one of the more unique products that I've ever used, and I admit at first I was a little skeptical, but it only took me a couple minutes using them and I've become a believer. These are gel knee pads with a hard plastic shell. Now, if you do any work on your knees, you're familiar with this sort of thing. And if you've ever used the gel pad version of these, you know they're much more comfortable. But the knee blades have an extra unique feature. You can clip on these wheel bases. Now imagine the implications of that. No more getting up and down and crawling around to reposition yourself as you work. You just roll. They work on wood floors, cement, even carpet. I've done a fair amount of floor installation in the past, and I would have loved something like this if I had had it at the time. In fact, I almost want to put new floors in my house just so I can use them for it. I can also think of a bunch of other uses for it, such as installing baseboards, painting, large finishing projects, tiling. I'm even thinking of taking them to a roller skating rink and maybe starting up a knee hockey league. Like I said, the wheel part pops on and off the included gel knee pad, so you don't have to walk around with the wheels on your knees all the time. In fact, sometimes I don't even strap on the knee pad. I just put them right on the floor and then I kneel on top of them. Then I can roll around and do my work, and if I want to stand up and go somewhere, I just leave them on the floor until I come back. They are super comfortable and super handy, and even though I don't work on the floor very often these days, I admit, I thought they were definitely worth adding to my tool collection. I'll link to them below so you can check them out for yourself. This is another one from a recent video that got a lot of attention. It's a burnisher that's specifically designed for forming the hook on the edge of a card scraper, which can then be used to create silky smooth surfaces on wood without the dust and the noise that comes from sanding. For a scraper to work, the steel along the edges must be formed into a pair of hooks, one on each side. It's these hooks that shave the wood, but it's also those hooks that frustrate a lot of woodworkers because it can be difficult to form them with a typical burnisher because you have to hold it at various angles as you fold the metal edges over. This burnisher solves the problem and it makes scraper sharpening almost idiot proof, which is good for guys like me. The key is the shape of the rod. Note the three V grooves in the center. These consistently form both hooks on both sides of the scraper's edge all at once without having to worry about angles. I usually use the center groove. The other two are for more aggressive or less aggressive hooks. I put a drop of oil on and then I slide the burnisher along the scraper's edge. I only have to keep it reasonably parallel to the bench or to the floor and in just three or four passes, I have a perfectly formed hook edge that will not only create shavings easily, but it will be consistent and long lasting. There are two versions of the AccuBurr burnisher, one with fancy brass handles and another without handles. Now I admit the handled version is more comfortable to use, but the handleless version is perfectly serviceable and it's about half the price. You can even make your own handles by just adding a couple of brass compression fittings from the hardware store. If you're into card scrapers or if you've been frustrated by scrapers in the past, give this burnisher a try. It is a game changer in my opinion. I'll link to it below. Whenever I do a Cool Tools video, I try to get in touch with Emily over at Isotunes and see what kind of discount I can get for you folks because as most of you know, I've been using Isotunes hearing protection for years, back before they were sponsoring all these YouTube channels. They are a legit family business and I think all of you should consider a set, not just to support a small brand, but because these things will save your hearing. This time they let me pick which models they put on sale for you guys. So I chose my favorite in-ear model, which is the free 2.0. I like these because there are no wires at all. They just slip in your ears and they protect your hearing while also giving you the ability to listen to music, podcasts, take phone calls, that kind of thing. I like to wear these outside the shop when I'm mowing the lawn or I'm doing something that's gonna take a while because I can just leave them in my ears. Inside the shop though, I usually prefer the Air Defender over the ear muffs because they are ultra light and they are really comfortable. They got a lot of extra padding on them. These things are easy to just throw on and take off without having to stick something in my ears. I like that convenience. If I'm not listening to any music, I just want hearing protection to make one or two cuts, pop them on, pull them off. 
but I also find them comfortable to wear all day long and listen to music or podcasts. So for the next few days, you can get my two favorite models for 20% off with my code STUMPY20. I'll put a link below this video that'll take you right to them and it will automatically enter the code for you. You'll see the discount when you check out. You're not gonna see it just in your cart. You have to click checkout, but it'll show you obviously before you pay. That 20% off also applies to their new AM FM Air Defenders. So if you're old school and you like to listen to the radio while you work, those might be for you. Again, those three models are on sale for 20% off only through May 7th. So use the link while you can. Ever since Porter Cable stopped making routers, I've been looking for a good replacement and I have tried several, but I think I found my new favorite. This is the Triton three and a half horsepower plunge router. And it has an amazing array of clever features that you really should know about before you invest in your next router. First, this is a plunge router. And plunge routers are not usually a good choice for mounting in a router table, but this one is different. It's a great table router because it has a built-in router lift. I borrowed these clips from Matt Cremona. Go check out his channel. He's had one of these routers in a table for six years and he loves it. As you can see, the crank slips through a hole in the router plate, which you could drill yourself in any router table, and it engages with the router beneath to raise and lower the bit. That is huge because router lifts are really handy, but they're really expensive. You get that function free with this router. Another cool feature is for handheld use. It has dual plunge mechanisms. Now you can move the motor up and down like a normal plunge router, or you can engage a rack and pinion mechanism and gradually plunge downward by turning the knob on the side. I find this very comfortable and easily controllable. It's one of the things that first drew me to this router. What I didn't realize at first though, was something even handier about that. When you're using the knob, you have the option to engage a system of indents that allow you to plunge the bit in controlled stages, taking a quarter inch of material per pass. Having this built right into the plunge mechanism is incredibly handy for taking deeper and heavier cuts. There is also a built-in micro adjuster on top, so you can slowly move the plunge mechanism and dial in your cut. Now check this out. If you plunge fully, the collet extends to the bottom for easy access and it automatically locks. So you can now change the bit with a single wrench. I have no idea why all routers don't do this. It is such a good idea. And in this position, the little safety door that covers the switch locks. So now it's impossible to accidentally bump that switch and turn it on. I'm not saying that that's a replacement for just unplugging the tool when you change the bit, but it is a handy safety feature for those who don't always remember to unplug the tool. Speaking of safety, there are sturdy polycarbonate shields on both sides to keep your fingers away from the bit, but it doesn't get in your way because again, the bit changes are done above the plate. And there's a built-in port for a vacuum hose to suck up the dust. Dust collection has always been a big issue with routers and dust ports that attach are usually in the way and they're easily broken. This design is a big improvement in my opinion. Like I said, it's a three and a quarter horsepower motor so it can handle big routing tasks. They do make a smaller version, but the bigger version I think is my favorite. And it has soft start, so it's not gonna jerk when you turn it on. It has variable speed from 8,000 to I think 21,000 RPM and it has a dynamic load monitoring system. So that helps it to maintain consistent speed, whether it's working hard or just taking a light pass. This honestly is the most feature loaded router I've ever owned. In fact, this particular model, I believe has won a bunch of awards for innovation since it came out 20 years ago. That's right, it's not a new gimmick. This has been around for 20 years. It's well known for quality and it's been proven. So if you wanna check it out for yourself before you buy another router, I highly recommend that you do. I'll put a link below this video. My last cool tool is one of the most used in my life, not just in the shop. It is the Kershaw gravel knife that I keep in my pocket. I am seldom without this thing. I like it for a couple of reasons. First, it's relatively thin, so I can slip it into my pocket and I don't feel it poking into my leg or bouncing around in my pocket all day. It's also relatively short, again, for comfort, but that two and a half inch blade is long enough to get the job done. I like the shape of the blade too. Some of the Kershaw knives are a little too pointy and you can break that tip easy. This one is more tough and I like that it has a gradual curve with no dip 
in the edge. That just makes it easier to sharpen. I also love the blade assist that pops it open single-handed. The bronze color is nice too. I'm gonna link to it below this video, but I don't know how many they have. So if it sells out, don't be mad at me. First come, first serve, I'd say just put it on your wish list. So that's it for this 39th edition of Cool Tools. Don't forget to use the links below. And as a reward for those who stuck around to the end, here's a good place to buy bandsaw blades. If you get what you pay for, then why are bandsaw blades so inexpensive at sawblade.com? Seriously, they're as good as any I've used. They come in any size you need, and they cost quite a bit less than anything comparable at the woodworking retailers. Try them for yourself at the link below this video. You'll see.